like I said, $185 is about an average of student accommodation, what they're going to pay per week. Um, but also it depends on where you live, how many people you live with, you know, do you live by yourself? Do you drive everywhere? You know, do you eat out all the time? So um, it's, when it comes down to it, um, yeah, we might be less expensive in some areas than say Sydney and Melbourne and more in other areas. So it all evens out. And so um, really, if someone says, oh, Canberra's so expensive, it, in reality, it's, it's not when you compare and, to, you know, look at the big picture. Now, a key though that I need to point out is the the travel. Okay, so um, compared to like uh, Sydney and Melbourne, which unfortunately don't give travel concessions to all their students in the ACT, if you're on a, if you have a CIT card, okay, like this, um, you you um, it'll say full time student, okay, and that will get you uh, fifty percent off on your uh, public transportation when you tap on and off of the light rail and the bus. Okay, so we have an excellent public transportation system. And, um, and yeah, so no matter if you're studying Ellicos or a PhD, every student that's studying full time in the ACT will get that 50% travel concession. Now, uh, where are we located? Okay, we are with, like I said before, within uh, New South Wales, okay, um, but 400,000 people, but we are not hard to get to. We are strategically located. You know, we're two hours from the snow, two hours from the sea, okay? Sometimes it takes us a lot quicker to get to the Pacific Ocean at Batemans Bay um, than those people who are living in the Western Sydney suburbs fighting against traffic just to go to the beach, okay? Because we don't have traffic. <laughs> and um, but yeah, we it's, Sydney's just a three-hour drive. People come for the weekend all the time to see our museums, eat at our restaurants, um, go to our uh, capital wine district region. Um, now, but I, when I travel to Sydney on bus business, I take the bus because buses leave every hour on the hour from 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day, more or less. And um, I know that I'm going to get to the CBD of Sydney in three and a half hours, no matter if it's raining or if it's windy. So, you know, because I've I've, my, I've had flights canceled or delayed because of weather, but that's not going to happen when you take the bus. And um, the first stop that the buses uh, take uh, in Sydney is always the international terminal at the Sydney airport, okay? Um, and which is convenient, okay? And I've done that before as well. I've also, um, I've also flown from the Canberra airport as well because uh, it's we go direct to we can go direct now not <coughs> just by virgin not just by Qantas, but um uh tiger air is doing domestic flights now from um to um melbourne and brisbane so yeah lots of options there now but we are an international destination as well because singapore airlines has been flying directly to canberra for three years now and qatar air uh has been flying for two years now into canberra and we've seen a growth and a boom in our tourism because of um, the opening of, of that airport and being international. Okay, that's Canberra. Okay, so now we are uh, looking at our courses. Like I said, we are a TAFE, okay? TAFEs have a lot of courses available for international students. We have over 80 qualifications within these course areas, okay? From art and design to cookery, to English, okay, and um, but in the vet sector, okay, because we only have uh, we have we have certificate three, certificate four, diploma, and advanced diploma. I want to re keep reminding you that we do not have bachelor programs, okay? Bachelor programs can be found at the ANU University of Canberra. Some and and in a lesser to a lesser scale, CSU. Uh, UNSW Canberra and 
um, ACU, uh, ACU, CSU. So um, these are our champion courses in the vet sector, if you are familiar, and the vet sector is your main sector. Um, I'm sure you can see similarities in your um, champion courses that is the same as ours. And why is that? Well, we all know that 90% of it is probably linked to migration. But um, look, commercial cookery, childcare, nursing, these are very popular for us. Our accounting program um, is very popular with students wanting to continue into the bachelor program at University of Canberra, as well as our graphic design program. Um, you do two years to get an advanced diploma in graphic design at CIT, and then you only need one more year to complete the degree at University of Canberra. So great accreditation um, um, arrangements over there. We have two diplomas in IT, the software development and networking, very, very popular. We have a large IT sector in um, Canberra, and um, so we see a lot of students doing that at CIT with, um, uh, and, and yeah, they're great courses. And then building and construction, uh, we see a lot of, uh, this is a very popular course. We've seen a lot of growth in this. Um, you can do a one-year building and construction management diploma, or uh, you can do the building uh, and construction building for either two years or three years, depending on which route you want to go. Um, and then community services is one of our popular ones as well. Again, another course that includes a, um, a industry placement. Um, these, um, uh, so you end up in after two years with a diploma of community services, but you have five options of getting there with the first year of uh, a certificate for whether it's in, you know, youth work, community development, um, community services, alcohol and other drugs, mental health, et cetera. So this slide is very important because uh, basically uh, it's industry in Australia that uh, dictate what training skills are needed and therefore they tell the, the vocational schools what what, what qualifications they require, okay? So um, those champion courses that I showed you um, require the skill, in, give students the skills that um, uh, these jobs need, okay? And the, this is just a, an outlook in Australia. It's um, um, showing the number of jobs that are available from 2018 and, and their outlook until 2023. And so this is why we are seeing the, uh, those popular, um, those popular um, courses, for, for those courses being so popular. Okay, now for those of you that um, have students that require Elecos, we do have Elecos. We have um, general English, okay? We, um, our courses start every five weeks. We have nine intakes a year, okay? Um, now, now our, our fees are a bit higher, okay, than in, in some markets uh, compared to some markets because Canberra is a different market, okay? Um, but we do have no application in material fees. We have very small and diverse classes, okay? And the, um, the English, so... It takes 10 weeks to complete a level, okay? The minimum that one person can do in English is five weeks, okay? You can't do 24 weeks or 26 weeks. You can do five, 10, 15, 20. We encourage students uh, genuine, uh, for genuine purposes to do at least 10 weeks because um, it, that they'll get an outcome with that, okay? Five weeks, yeah, possibly in some cases we can use it as a gap, a non-study, you know, to prevent a non-study gap for visa purposes. But, um, but in most cases, we will um, encourage 10, 10 weeks, okay? Um, so we go down from elementary all the way up to an academic level, which is equivalent to an IELTS 6.5, okay? Um, now, 380 is the base, okay? So if someone's gonna do just Elecos only, it's $380 per week, okay? But if someone uh, 
packages that with a mainstream course, they will pay $300 a week, okay? So when I go back, if someone is doing 380 per week on a working holiday visa or a visitor visa, 10 weeks, they pay 380. If they study further with us at CIT in a vocational course, we will still uh, give them a discount of $80 for every week that they studied previously. So they can still get that $300 a week because they don't have to package, you know, to get that. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Um, now, it's important for you to know um, for some offshore applications. Uh, look, when everything <laughs> settles down, uh, we do have some um, offshore uh, um, well, cost, uh, a promotion for well, some well, markets. Well, well, okay. well, well, sorry, and. Um, and I encourage you to talk to um, Yes Education to Wayne about which markets those are, um, those, 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 that promotion is coming from, okay? Um, now, student support. Um, we are a big TAFE, okay? Um, so the students will be taken care of, basically, okay? From our wonderful international student orientation welcome, okay, at the beginning of the semesters and terms to our dedicated international student advisors. We have professional counseling services for free for students, okay? Uh, industry placement support, like I said, now, a, a, not all of our courses have industry placement, the, but the majority, a lot of them do. Um, all of them are unpaid, okay, except for commercial cookery. We can guarantee that if a student does commercial cookery with us, they will get paid for all those hours that they require to, con to complete, okay? And I'll show you a little bit more about that. Now, um, pastoral care officers, lots of academic support, whether it's in person or online. And then there's, again, the CIT Student Association or CITSA, okay? They are a great resource and very unique to a vet, uh, a vet, the vet sector, okay? They, they, um, they connect students to the greater Canberra community, okay? And um, they also provide uh, excellent resources for accommodation and, um, employment okay so um yeah they're a great resource they manage the commercial services at cit the canteen the um bookshop the cafes um so all of those and they student support services now um for those of you uh who are familiar with the entry requirements for vocational education the ours are more or less the same okay you, you must be 18 years old. You must have a year 12 or equivalent um, uh, to start a course. And um, the majority of our courses require a 5.5 IELTS or equivalent, okay? And um, a statement of purpose, okay? And I'm gonna go into depth about that statement of purpose, also called the GTE uh, statement, um, because it is required at the time of application and it is imperative that you, um, you, you submit a complete application with that, okay? Um, now, those entry requirements, now, Today, we just learned that we are a level two institution, okay? So check your document checklist with the country that the student is from and our school um, to make sure to, if the student needs to show um, an English test or a, um, an English test or the financial documentation, okay? Uh, to check English, um, if they don't have a test, uh, students can do an English placement test in your office, uh, in your office that must be supervised by you. Um, it's not online, it must be done in pencil or pen, or in, and, um, and you can get those instructions from Wayne and the team uh, in Sydney, okay? And um, it will only test the um, uh, writing and the reading skills uh, set. Um, but if your student is in Canberra, we can book them that English placement test here at our English language school. So um, yeah, just wanna throw that out there as well. 
Now, our intakes. Now, this is my final slide uh, before I switch the screen. Now, in February, we have all courses are available, okay? Um, in April, uh, we have four courses available. The nursing, the cookery, and the child care are our most popular courses. That's why they are offered four times a year. So those courses that you see in April and October are offered four times a year because, like I said, very, very popular. Our nursing, um, yeah, that's already full for April. Um, and yeah, so I've heard not many uh, TAFEs and big schools can offer those uh, intakes. So hopefully that helps for some of you. Now, July, um, all of our courses are available except the art and design and multimedia courses, okay? Uh, and the year 12. We do have a year 12 course. I'm sorry, that should be in, the, in there as well. That's only a February intake only as well. Okay, so um, business, uh, so business um, courses, uh, community services, aged care, uh, those type of courses, uh, building and construction, uh, those will be offered in July as well as February. Okay, now um, that's my presentation. I'm going to just share with you um, a few things. This isn't the most important, okay? Okay, so everyone, you should be able to see my uh, screen. And you're looking at a genuine temporary entrant guide, CIT, okay? When you submit an application uh, to our team, okay, we, our admissions team requires um, a resume and CV, the year 12 or equivalent uh, documents, the English if it's required, um, you know, the, the transcripts and everything, and a GTE statement, okay? Because when you apply for a student visa, you have to include a GTE statement. Now, one of the reasons we got to level two, uh, and that's the first time we've been level two since SSBF started, was because we've implemented these measures uh, the, to, to mitigate our risk and the risks of your students, okay? So we ask for your cooperation and um, your partnership to uh, share this guide uh, with your um, students. And, um, and I'll share this with Wayne, who can share it with you if you don't already have it. But um, this, is, this, this is a non-negotiable, okay? You'll get your offer letter if you can include all of this, um, if you can include all of this in the, um, at the beginning, okay? Um, and just get used to it. Um, we're not gonna budge on it, okay? We will go, our team will go back to say, please, um, you know, include this information, blah, blah, blah. So your student's GTE statement must include every single point, okay, that's in this document. They must include it in their written statement, okay? Explain their gap, their value of their course to their future, each of those. So it's just, it's spelled out right in front of them. Um, that needs to happen, okay? Um, a resume and CV, okay, number six, that will, that will answer that. Okay, ties to the home country. So all of you should know this, but this needs to be done when you submit the application to CIT and stage one. Okay, now the financial documentation, um, that, that can vary between countries. Okay, uh, but for those that need it for their visa, well, you need to show it to us as well, okay? Um, and if it's hard, I know in some countries it's hard to get, um, and, and you usually get it uh, later. So if, if, if you can just submit or, or write in the statement, you know, um, or submit like a message saying, you know, I'm prepared to provide you with this, this, and this at the time of acceptance of my offer letter, okay? Um, that, that, if that helps you, um, we can give that a go as well, okay? But that GTE statement must have all of these points, okay? So sorry for repeating myself, but I, it's very important. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and show you um, a couple uh, websites, okay, that I want you to be familiar with. The first is our website, okay? Our website is international.cit.com 
www.edu.au, okay? This is where you can find out about all of our courses. You choose courses here, okay? And let's go to uh, hospitality, tourism, okay? Each course has a web page. It talks about a little description, an industry placement if there is one, okay? So here, this talks about how, um, it talks about the number of hours that are included in the course. And remember, this course for commercial cookery is the only one where they're gonna get paid, okay? So if, um, there's sometimes there's videos um, about commercial, about the course, okay? And then it talks about, so the course, the, the codes, the duration of the package, certificate three, four, diploma. There's also advanced diploma if a student requires that as well. And then it has the intakes as well, okay? As well as the fees, okay? So extra fees are here. The fees for each semester, they're all on the website. Entry requirements, okay? everything is here there's the english entry requirements okay there's also the course subjects each course will have show the subject okay the subjects for each qualification likely job outcome okay so if you have a student that asks you oh i'm not sure what i need to do well you can say look vocational education is about the outcome the job you want so you could say I want to be a restaurant manager. Okay, so go and apply for the diploma. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's all here. And in some cases, there is uh, pathways to further study, talking about um, what, you know, how many credits you can get for a certain um, degree at University of Canberra and so on. Okay, so um, it's all at your fingertips. Uh, art and design courses, okay? Click on each one to learn more about the fees, the entry requirements and everything there, okay? Now, the second page I wanna show you is our um, YouTube channel, okay? I encourage you to subscribe to our CIT International YouTube channel. It's International CIT, okay? That will take you there okay so just type tafe and camber or cit international all these videos are here for you okay to learn about cit to learn about canberra um, here we have a quality of life series that we did short videos that are snippets about life in canberra and the quality of good quality of life that we have here so um yeah um they're your they're tools for you uh to help you and to support you Okay, so um, I'm going to stop sharing now. And um, yeah, so let's see, I'll take some questions. I see that um, Wayne, you've been yes. dealing with this. So yeah, is there any questions or that I can answer right now? Yep. Hi, everyone. If, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, if you do have any question, you can either unmute yourself and ask Jason directly, or you can type up your question uh, in the chat box. Is there any any question, guys? Okay, there's one question about the uh, the information file. So yeah, um, yeah, those files. Wayne has those files. The file he has the presentation he could share, and um, also like the GTE guide and other documents he can share with you as well. Yes. Yes, we'll do that. Any other question? I actually have a question here, uh, Jason. Yeah, go for it. Um, okay. The, um, in, in your past experience, has any uh, international student at CIT experienced any uh, like accommodation shortage there? Like they couldn't get a accommodation? Um, you know, it happens every now and then, I'm sure, but um, I don't hear about it often. Um, like I said, it's a renter's market here. There's lots mm -hmm. of options here for students. Um, there's lots of apartments and units. And, and as well, um, like I can't stress, uh, I stress anymore, like CIT Student Association or SITSA, um, 
I know this because I used to be a student support officer there. Right. They, they are the advocates for CIT students. Okay. Right. They are the advocates for, um, uh, so if a student does not know who to contact at CIT or if they need help um, somewhere in Canberra to like a, a nonprofit organization. But uh, most of the questions are, or when I was working there, it was Jason, you know, help me. I, I need to find accommodation. I need to, um, you know, I need a job. Okay. They have resources to help those students. Okay, so um, I'd say just go to SITSA and they will be your advocate. They will help the students um, if they are struggling. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, we get a yeah, question here, uh, Jason. Um, uh, we should start with the scholarships. Scholarship from Ivy? Yep. Yeah, yeah, so Ivy. No, um, for Vietnamese students, unfortunately, there's no. Um, scholarships okay uh when i people ask about scholarships a lot um and first i need to throw back to you how many other tapes have scholarships you know um courses are fees are already um a lot less than at university okay and which is why we don't have a lot of scholarships i was talking about during elocos um at the moment we do have some offshore um uh for offshore applications only for ELOCOS. So if someone is packaging English or if someone is uh, doing ELOCOS only um, uh, for, but uh, English will be at $280 a week, but that's only for specific markets, okay? And those markets um, are Latin America, so all South America, Mexico, and all of that. Um, in level one countries like uh, Indonesia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, okay, um, and Japan. But um, yeah, but those details you can get from um, from Wayne. But yeah, unfortunately, Vietnamese market, no, it's not available. Um, that English one is not available. So sorry. Um, yeah, no problem. So the next one, uh, Jason from asked you, uh, please make clear about the English test. Um, what 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 do you mean? Perhaps. The English placement test. Yep, the English placement test, yes. Yeah, uh, let's see. Which one was that? Was uh, from after the scholarship um, question from Ivy. No, then I, uh, Mamun had a question about scholarship. Um, and then Niran. Yeah, uh, yeah, before that, the uh, after Ivy, there's the question from Astu uh, Education. Uh, please make clear about the uh, English test. I suppose uh, his question is about the English placement test. Okay, look, yeah, so it's the English placement test. Um, look on the document checklist, okay? Oh, minimum English to apply for ELOCOS and a visa. Yeah, look, um, the, okay, so those are on the, um, the immigration website, okay? So um, the minimum it would be, I think, I think it's a 4.5 if it's packaged with 20 weeks of English. Okay, that's no different than any other school. Okay, um, but remember, um, always check the document checklist. If the student needs, is requires an English test, then um, we will require it at the time of application. Okay, if not, uh, then then you may have the option of do, giving this, the, we may ask you, the agent, to give that student the English placement test in your office, okay, because it must be written. You have to proctor it, okay, um, and like I said, we'll pass that on to Wayne and the team, and they can pass it on to you, but generally what happens is you can just apply, and then our, um, then our team, um, we, our admissions team will say, oh, you know, you're, uh, we need a good idea of what the, the student's English level is, so can you please give the student the English placement test in your office, and then they'll send you the, te the placement test and the, um, and the instructions on how to do it. So really, yeah, in that case where a student doesn't need an English, an official English test for their visa, um, just submit the CIT application and then um, our admissions team will work with you from there. Okay, great. So next question are from Niranjan. What is yeah. the approximate uh, proposed proportion? Yeah. Of students, yeah, from Southeast, yeah. from South Asia region. Uh, I don't, I can't give you a, 
an approximate proportion, but um, you know, it's it's pretty. Uh, we kind of buck the trend when it comes to um, numbers. Okay, like uh, some of our top five would be like Korea, Bhutan, um, Philippines, uh, China. Like India doesn't make it. Nepal doesn't make it. Like uh, so, we're a bit different. Um, we have more Colombian students than Brazilian students. You know, but overall in Australia, there's more Brazilian students, you know, than Colombian. So um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty broad, but yeah, most are come from South Asia due to proximity. Um, but uh, in all of our courses overall, um, you're never gonna find um, more than 10% of a specific like language speaking group or a specific country in each class. Even in our English class, um, you, won't, you won't see that. So it's very diverse and very different there. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is um, I know that you are, um, if you work with ILSC, English uh, College, so we are a yes. pathway provider for ILSC English okay. College. So if you have students that are studying uh, in Sydney, Brisbane, or Melbourne there, um, if they, you know, meet a certain level, they can go direct entry into our uh, programs. Fantastic. Great. So, um, the next question, um, the uh, CIT has the uh, articulation with UNIC yeah. Canberra. Uh, what, I think what he means is a, is a, is a package COE yeah, arrangement. Yeah, right. Can you issue a COE? No, we cannot, uh, Govinda. Uh, um, and that is because uh, UC, they require a separate application. So it's articulation only. Um, if you want, to, if the student wants to do the package and, you know, their visa wants to it's going to be a higher ed sector instead of a vocational sector. Um, you will need to uh, uh, get our letter offer and then um, include that in the UC application. So yes, it's more work for you, but there's no, nothing we can do about it because it's um, UC requires a separate application. But okay, but uh, just to clarify in that question, so uh, which means we need to apply separately to you. You see, to get the COE from them, right? Exactly. So it's two separate applications. We're both on um, Study Link. Uh, so yeah, you have to get. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, it, you have to get the diff two different offer letters and then the COEs from each. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Next question. Welfare uh -huh. arrangements for under 18 students. No, oh, we don't. Um, we don't accept under 18 students. Okay. Um, uh, so th that's, that's a, that's not going to happen, unfortunately. Um, it, it's hard in some markets. Uh, and we found that since we stopped accepting um, uh, under 18s a couple years ago. So yeah, sorry about that. They have to be 18. Um, and there's no way around it. <laughs> No problem. Mm -hmm. Next one, minimum Next one. English. English. Already mentioned this yeah. one. So yeah, already, yeah. Is yeah. it uh, Anisul, do you have any diploma or advanced diploma program packaged offer with University of Canberra or any other university? Right. Uh, no, again, no package offer. Um, you have to do a separate application. Uh, other universities that we do have articulation arrangements where we see students um, uh, uh, being, you know, uh, those co universities accepting CIT's diploma. Um, yeah, our um, uh, um, Australia Capital University, uh, Australia Catholic University, ACU in, in the Canberra campus. See some CSU, but it's, it's look, <laughs> it's hard one. my advice is to always check with the university first. Okay. Um, just ask them straight up. Hey, I have a student that is going to, or has completed a diploma here. Um, you know, will they get credit into? Okay, so if for any ones that we do, you'll see it on our website as I showed you. Um, if there is a section on each course page, it, and it will show what the credit arrangement is. Um, okay, no problem. Uh, I think there's another question from me. You mentioned earlier that the uh, the commercial cookery student uh, uh, CID can guarantee the uh, the pay payment. Uh, can you el elaborate more in details? In, in relation oh, yeah, to yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, with all our other courses that have um, 
uh, industry placements like community services, age care, nursing, um, graphic design, interior design. Um, they all have an industry placement that a, a component that needs to be complete uh, before they can, you know, complete their qualification. Um, the same in hospitality. So for commercial cookery uh, and patisserie, they need to complete a certain number of industry hours, um, like as a chef at the, a specific restaurant um, with certain standards. It can't be a takeaway restaurant. Um, so they, they have to fill out their, their book, um, their, their book and get signed by their employer and by their teacher. So these hours are paid. They're going to be working at a restaurant as a chef in the Canberra community, um, at a hotel, at a restaurant. And, um, you know, th we teach them uh, work health safety before they, they go out. We teach them this is the wage that you should expect. Don't accept any lower. This is the law, how you do it. Um, you know, so they have to be paid. Um, our, it's, so it's guaranteed, okay? They're not going to be doing those hours at our CIT restaurant or CIT cafe. Like it's going to be uh, at an external employer. And, and we're able to guarantee that because we're not a big tourist destination like Melbourne and Sydney where there's um, competition with working holiday visa holders and other visa holders. So um, yeah, they will get paid. So it's a great opportunity to, to earn a lot of money in some cases. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. as you okay. become a qualified chef in Australia. Yeah, it's a great selling point. Yeah. So, I suppose. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, um, minimum yeah. English to apply for Elocos and uh, Visa. Okay. Uh, uh, minimum English. Look, we start at a general elementary level. Okay. Um, you don't need really a test for that. Um, if our admissions team, uh, sometimes our admissions team will uh, require um, that you give the student an English placement test in your office um, if the student is going to do 20 or 30 weeks of English, okay? Because if they have never done any English, they want to make sure that they're going to be started at the right level. They're going to get tested on the first day of class, but this will avoid them changing offer letters and COEs down the line. So a minimum English to apply, it's hard to really say that um, uh, when, you know, they might not need an English test. Uh, and for, you know, they don't need an English test if they're going to do Elocos study only. Um, that's, you know, that's not a requirement. That's a, one of the exemptions for a student visa. So I hope I answered your question, uh, Noon. Right. To further clarification on that question. So say, for example, if a student uh, passed the English test and, and achieved a uh, an English level that can meet the requirement of, of, of your diploma courses. Uh, does the student still need to undertake any early course courses at CIT or no, then no, straight no. into Look, the, if, uh, if they if they meet the uh, the minimum uh, that's required for the um, the vocational course, then yeah, they they will not uh, need any further English. Okay. In some cases, uh, um, like um, commercial cookery, for example, re we require 5.5 um, across all bands, whereas um, the minimum for other courses is um, a 5.5 overall with no band score less than five. So um, if there's one band score that's less than 5.5 for the cookery, then um, yeah, we might need to look at offering English. Um, in some countries, uh, Due to the risk levels, um, mm -hmm. we may not offer English because we have seen visa refusals with English COE. So um, that could be a case by case basis. Um, if depending on the band score, um, we'll have to get college approval uh, to see if they accept it. But yeah, everything's clear on our website. Just see, just look at what the uh, English requirement is. Um, you know, we list. Uh, the uh, PTE academic, the Cambridge, the IELTS, other English test scores, and our English, our CRT English. So they're all on the website. Okay, excellent. Uh, hi, guys. Are there any more questions that you'd like to ask? Um, seem pretty good. Yeah, so I far. think we've answered yep. all those so, questions. Yep, okay, all, all good. Then if there's any further question, you're welcome to contact Yes Education anytime. Then we can assist you to clarify 
any further question. And if there's no question, then we should end the session now. And thanks a lot for your time today, Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My pleasure. And thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for 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 your participation uh, today. Yep. Yeah. Uh, everyone, keep safe. Stay safe during stay this safe. period. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank now. you. Thanks, Jason. Bye now. Bye everyone. Bye.